Hello there. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, January 30th. I don't vlog often on Thursdays, but yesterday was a staff development day and y'all, I got so much done. So I thought I would take you along with me for the day so I could update you on some things. It's kind of a rainy, dreary day, but tomorrow is Friday. We have lunch provided for us today and February is right around the corner. So I'm gonna share the updates. We're gonna get ready for a nice relaxing weekend ahead and I'm gonna take you along with me. If you saw my vlog from Monday, you know that our schedule this week is kind of off. Now, Monday was a very normal kind of boring day. <laughs> Just nothing exciting going on. But then Tuesday we had our interim testing, which is basically like our test to prepare for the big star test in the spring. And on that day, we never really know what our schedule is gonna look like because our students have all day to do the tests and it just kind of depends on when we finish, if we finish and there's time left in the day and my switch teacher is done, we might switch classes, but it's all up in the air. We did end up switching classes and I was able to do just a little bit of like math and science review. I didn't teach any new lessons. I played a Generation Genius video and while that was playing, I just did some little things around my room. I got my calendar updated for February and I stayed after school because I didn't have planning or anything to do. I was all caught up on grading. I worked on a data spreadsheet and shout out to one of my team teachers who inspired this because she was gonna be out on Wednesday, so yesterday when we had a staff development day and there was a meeting where we were gonna be discussing data. So she sent over her spreadsheet so that we could use it during the meeting. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, I need to recreate this for myself. So let me show you what I did and why I love it. Obviously this is blank, <laughs> but just to show you how it's laid out as an example, it essentially has all of the math data for my students in one place, which I love. So over on the left, I have my students by their number, and then I have a line just kind of splitting my two classes. The next column is for star data and that interim data. So each of these has a drop down, and when you select the drop down, the choices are did not meet, approaches, meets, masters, or new. New just means they're a new student and maybe I don't have data on them. The other ones have to do with the scores and the way that the scores are reported for the interim as well as the star test. So I have a spot to put their data from third grade. So just as an example, maybe this student was meets in third grade and then their fall interim, maybe they got meets and then the spring one, they got master. So you'll notice that they are all color coded. Now, in order to insert these, if you just go up to insert and then you come down to drop down, it will open up this sidebar and then you can choose the range. So you can choose which cells you want those drop downs to be in. And then you can choose the different options. So you can color code them, you can drag them around in different orders. And if you want, you can even allow multiple selections. But I just created those basic drop downs. Then the next column also has drop downs, but these are for the iReady diagnostic tests that our students take. So there is a spot for beginning of the year, middle of the year, and end of the year. And again, these criteria are based on how the iReady reports their score. So they can either be three or more grade levels below, two grade levels below, one grade level below, early on grade level or mid or above. And once again, these are color coded. So let's say this student was one grade level below and then they move to early on grade level. So I love having the color coded because it just makes it easy to follow along. And then finally, we have all of our like curriculum based assessments and the scores. So I have conditionally formatted these. So based on the score that I type in, it will automatically color code. So if it's a 90 or above, it will turn green. If it's an 80 to an 89, it'll be yellow. If it is 70 to 79, orange. And then if it is below a 70, it will be red. Just to show you how I set this up. Once again, you would select the range where you want this to apply, come to format, and then choose conditional formatting. And you'll notice I have four different rules, one for each color. 
I started with the green one, so that top value, and I just put greater than or equal to 90. Because this one is at the top, it will kind of override all the other rules below it. So even though the bottom one says greater than or equal to zero, it would turn red because this one is on top, then if it's over 90, it's actually gonna turn green. Hopefully that makes sense. But within each of these rules, you just select the range. You can choose from the drop down select your number if it's gonna be a number or other criteria, and then you can choose the color. So these are all color coded that as I type in score, so for example, if this student got a 92, it will automatically turn that color, and then you'll notice the average will update. Right now, these errors are because there's no data in any of these cells, but as I fill it in, so for example, let's say they got a 92 and an 88, the average will change to 80. So that average is just gonna update as I put in their scores, because obviously some of those assessments we have not taken yet, but I am just obsessed because it has everything in one spot and it's so nice and clean. And then this is something I can reuse next year. I'm not gonna share this because obviously it is customized for my students and my school and my district and all of that, but hopefully you can utilize the idea and recreate something that would work for you and have all of your data in one place as well. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Yesterday, our students were off school. It was Lunar New Year. And as a staff, we had a PD day, essentially. We call it staff development. But there were a few meetings I had to attend, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Otherwise, I had a lot of planning time and I was so productive. I am proud of myself because I went into the day saying, I need to just buckle down, sit at my computer, as boring as that may be, and I need to just crank out some slides and get some planning done. Now, I was already like a good week ahead, maybe two weeks ahead in my planning, but I wanted to get even farther ahead. So I got here at my normal time, even though I could have gotten here a little bit later, although I did leave on time, so that was nice. But throughout the day, I think I planned eight different lessons, plus got copies made. So right now, if I go in my future drawer, I have all of the graded assignments for the next module. So three different stacks of those. I have homework for next week. I have, there's another handout. It's still in the copy room because my team teacher is sorting it. I just put that in the wrong drawer. It's fine, I'll fix it later. <laughs> so ahead on copies and then I mentioned getting like eight lessons planned. So let me show you, I know I've showed this before, but as an updated version, how I lay out each one of our units and then how I keep track of like my lesson planning and everything that goes along with that. So I call this a unit overview. It is a Google doc and I create one of these for each unit that we teach. So I put the unit number and title at the top. I have our academic calendar linked on every single one of them. It goes over like, basically the scope and sequence, and then when our testing window is. Underneath, I create a row for each different day of the unit. So this particular unit has 19 days. And the next column is the date that we plan to teach that lesson. Now this, you'll notice these are all hyperlinked. It links to the slideshow that I create where every day has all the slides that I'm gonna to use to teach that lesson. And each one is linked to that particular day. So for example, if I click on day three, it's gonna take me directly to the day three slide. I was gonna say it's a little laggy, but it will take me directly to the slide that I need for that day. Then I list just an overview of the topic. So just in simple terms, like, hey, what does this lesson focus on? And then status, there is need to plan, in progress, and ready. So ready means that it's all planned out, it's ready to go, for lack of better terms. Materials are anything out of like the ordinary that we might need for that lesson. So some of the lessons have these sprint activities which are in their fluency books. And I just put it on there to kind of let my team teachers know, hey, they're gonna need their sprint fluency books for that day. Cause it's not something we get out every day unless we particularly need it. And then I put any notes if there's something just kind of different about that lesson. So for example, this first one does not have an application problem. For this one, I said, hey, for these slides, you're gonna model this under the document camera. I also will hyperlink any materials. So for example, here, I have linked a set of notes and once again, this links to their math notebook and it will go directly to that slide. So I've put in there the decimals overview notes. These are part of my upper elementary notes pack, 
which I will link for you. It's on TPT. The traditional page goes up to thousands, but because they are editable, I just went in and deleted the thousands because we only focus on tenths and hundredths. Then I also link to the graded assignment. So I have been creating all of these, and then you'll notice over here, I say how many points, and I also link to the answer key, which they're all part of the same Google Slides. I make them all in one file for that unit. So I have like, here's the graded assignment, and then followed by the answer key. And it just has them all in one place, which is really nice. So if you scroll down and you keep track of the dates, currently we are all planned out through February 21st. So almost a month in advance, which feels really, really good. And then you'll notice these ones that say in progress. Those are ones where I have set up the slides, I've done like the spiral review, I've done the application problem, I've done the fluency. All that's left are the conceptual understanding slides, which are a bulk of the lesson, but I would say those lessons are like halfway planned out. So basically I have at least worked on every single day of this unit. And then at the very end, it's our day when we take the test. So I don't really have anything to prepare for that. But I have already created the basketball review that we will use at the end. And there's only seven lessons left to plan for this unit. And then that will take us through the beginning of March. So it feels good, y'all. You feel good, body strong. And I'm especially proud of myself because I've never been one to be super far ahead in my planning, usually one week, two weeks max. And the fact that I'm this far ahead with a brand new curriculum, I mean, it's gonna be brand new to me regardless because it's my first year teaching here, but it's brand new to everyone. Now it might be changing next year, but that's a problem for a future Michelle. We're gonna worry about that <laughs> when I have more information. First week of February, so the week of February 3rd is National School Counseling Week. And one of my team teachers created this big like donut poster that we're gonna give to our school counselor. And she cut up all of these colored little square rectangles to represent the sprinkles for the donuts. There's also gonna be like a shaker bottle up above it. So sprinkles are coming down because I don't think we can fit all of the <laughs> sprinkles on the donut. It's a big donut, but it's not that big. So today as part of our like for Emerson Family Forum, which is our morning meeting. I will give each of my students one of these to write just words of appreciation and thanks for our school counselor. And we can sprinkle the love when we get there. No, that is next week. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sitting here looking at my calendar and because I switched it over to February, it's throwing me off because the first row is technically the end of January, but that's next week. Okay, today is the 30th. February 3rd is Monday. <laughs> wow, I need to get it together. I may be planned ahead, but apparently my days are off. Now, because Monday is February 3rd, that means Sunday is February 2nd, which is Groundhog Day. Ironically, Billy and I just watched the movie Groundhog Day last weekend for the first time. <laughs> but during science today, my students are completing an independent graded assignment. It's not gonna take the whole class. So I am gonna also fit in this mini lesson from Mystery Science, Can Animals Really Predict the Weather? So I shared about Mystery Science, I think two vlogs ago. You as a teacher can get it free through the end of the school year. I've never paid for a subscription, so honestly, I don't even know how much a subscription costs. I'm currently on the free plan but they have full science lessons, like full science units, at least for K through five. And they have these mini lessons that are great when you just have little chunks of time. So they release these, I wanna say on a weekly basis, but I could be wrong. This one just recently came out. The initial video I wanna say is about four, yeah, four minutes long. Then you go to the next page, you have a discussion question, and then there's another video. <laughs> That's just a couple of minutes long. So that you can do this whole lesson in about 10, 15 minutes, but they have a whole bunch of these available. You can look at all like the previous episodes and usually they're pretty relevant to things like going on in that season or time of year or recent events, things like that. And it's great connections to science and things that are actually relevant to students. And a lot of the questions that they answer are things that our students have asked before. So. Once again, I will link Mystery Science if you are curious and interested. I have no affiliation with them. It's just a resource that I absolutely love to use in my classroom and wanted to share. And speaking of science, I'm sure someone already called me out on it. 
in my last vlog. I haven't looked yet, but I just want you to know, I found the mistake myself, okay? My science word wall I had shared in the last vlog, and then I realized that the titles for these last two sections, so critical energy resources, rocks and natural resources, I had them flip-flopped. I had rocks and natural resources over here and then critical energy resources here. I had just put them in the wrong spot and then didn't notice until finally my team teacher comes in every week and like takes a picture of my word wall <laughs> so she can use it as inspiration, which bless her because can we just, some of my drawings, not the best, but <laughs> all of a sudden I was staring at it and I was like, those titles are completely wrong. Like that doesn't even make sense. So I just want you to know, I did catch my mistake. I did fix it. I flip flopped it. All is good in the world, or at least in our world for science. <laughs> I am happy to report it was a successful day despite the weather. Just minutes before my students started arriving at school, it downpoured. I mean, it was raining cats and dogs. They came in soaking wet. I felt so bad but it cleared up and we were able to go outside for recess. It's sunny and pretty nice out now. <laughs> so things, you know, we're looking up. We found the silver lining, if you will. Overall, it was kind of a hectic day only because I was trying to fit in some extra things. I mentioned the sprinkles for the donut card for our school counselor, but also we had cards going around for our crossing guards because I think it's the week after I'm trying to I cannot see from here. I don't know why I thought I'd be able to see that. I think it's the 10th of February is like crossing guard appreciation day. So there was the rush of trying to get those signed as well. Plus we had a school climate survey that I was administering during science and then also trying to fit in a graded assignment, which I already got graded and in the grade book. So I feel good about that. Math today went really well. We were focusing on dot plots and my students retained a lot of the information from third grade. And we were kind of extending that to work with fractions and mixed numbers on a dot plot. And I felt like they did a really good job. So all in all, it was a good day. Plus during my planning time, I originally thought I wouldn't really have planning time because typically on Thursdays we have our grade level planning. So we meet as a fourth grade team. It's when we go over any information from like admin or recent meetings, we go over upcoming events. So things like field trips or parties, and we just make sure we're all on the same page. However, we ended up not meeting as a team today because three of our seven teachers had a planning day today and they were out, like they were in the building, but they weren't really here. They had subs. And so as a result, we didn't end up meeting and I pivoted and I said, okay, I'm gonna get some more planning done. And I got another, what, three lessons planned, I think. I wanna say I have three or four left for the next unit, which feels really good. Now I did kind of cheat a little bit. I purposefully chose to work on lessons that I knew would be really quick to plan because some of them, it might just be working through a couple of word problems and it's as easy as typing the word problem on the slide. Whereas other ones, if I'm walking them through a new concept, I have to add in a lot of animations and creating like fractions on the slides are always kind of wonky. But I feel good that I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and the fact that we're not even done our current module and I already have the entire next module almost all planned feels really good. In fact, Billy's gonna be at work for another like hour or so. I might sit here and just see what else I can get done because I would love to end my week with having all of that planned and ready to go. It's not that it needs to be done, but I would feel good if I got that done. And my reward can be one of my team teachers shared a crumble cookie with me. Now, this is one cookie. <laughs> I promise I do not have four cookies in here. Say, me eat cookie. Um, it's one of the, yeah, like the caramel, caramel corn. You can't see that, hold on. There we go, that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna bring it home obviously and share it with Billy, although I could totally eat it by myself. I'm not going to though. But I thought that would be a nice treat for being productive this week, getting things done and I feel proud of myself, I feel good. It takes off a lot of the stress and overwhelm when I know that I've been proactive and gotten ahead. So maybe, maybe this inspired you a little bit to do the same. A lot of times it means sacrificing time now, but the fact that it frees up time later and it reduces stress to me is worth it. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on 
and I'll catch you in the next one.